please don't hate me for what I'm about to say. I'm a Peter girl. I know, like, why would I be when four is right there? It's just like, oh, what can I say? I didn't choose this life. I didn't choose it. But like, I can fix him, maybe. I mean, no, I really truly couldn't. He couldn't even fix himself if he was given a factory reset. It's probably 99% because he is portrayed by Miles Teller in the movies. But anyways, as you can see, today we're gonna be talking about the Divergent trilogy. We're gonna go through all three books. It's kind of bizarre, so stay with me. I'm going to be talking about the plot very broadly, so let's just get into it. I just got out of the shower, so disregard this, but my Patreon is open now, and it'll have a bunch of fun videos that are exclusive to Patreon only. My reaction to The Ballad of Songbirds and Snakes, the Hunger Games movie prequel that just came out, uh, I'll be talking about that on Patreon. I was trying to figure out whether I wanted to do channel memberships or Patreon, but um, this Patreon is here to stay. I figured out the rhythm. I figured out what I want to do. But yeah, if you want to support the channel, go check that out. So the main character of these books is Beatrice. The society that she lives in is governed by factions. So everybody at the age of 16 takes this aptitude test and you are put into one of five different groups of people. Each one of these groups of people in this society value a particular virtue over the others. For example, dauntless people value courage the most, erudite people value knowledge, amity people value kindness I believe, candor people value honesty, and abnegation people value selflessness. So anyway, you take this test and this test is supposed to tell you which one of these factions you fit into the most. And then there is a choosing ceremony where you can choose whatever faction you want. Most people choose either the faction they grew up with or the faction the test says that they should choose. If you don't decide to choose any one of the five factions, then you become factionless. And essentially when you're factionless, you're homeless, you aren't like a contributor to society, you're not a part of any one group. So at the start of book one, Beatrice and her brother Caleb are both at the age where they are taking the aptitude test and are about to undergo their choosing ceremony. Beatrice takes the aptitude test and she makes decisions. She makes very unorthodox decisions so that when she's done with the test, the test proctor, who is this character named Tori, was like, girl, you have got an aptitude for three different factions, abnegation, erudite, and dauntless. This indicates that Beatrice is divergent and we will get more into what that is and what that means later, but so now it's the day of the choosing ceremony and Tris is kind of like, huh, what do I do with this information? Like, which one do I pick? Because I was given three different options. And in the choosing ceremony, her brother Caleb goes before her and he ends up choosing Eurydite, which is the, you know, knowledge one. This comes as a shock to everybody involved, especially because in this current day and age, tensions between abnegation, which is the faction that uh, Caleb and Beatrice grew up in, tensions between Eurydite and abnegation are very high right now. Their like leaders don't agree on much. The Eurydite leaders are like, kind of bashing the abnegation leaders publicly. So Beatrice sees that her brother has, you know, changed factions and she's like, well, shit, I kind of wanted to change factions as well because as much as I try to be selfless, I don't really feel like that is something that I can maintain for the rest of my life. And so she gets up there, she's gonna choose which faction and she makes the very interesting decision of going from abnegation to dauntless. And those are kind of like, even though there's not really a spectrum, those are kind of on opposite ends of the spectrum because abnegation is all about, you know, modesty, putting others before yourself. I don't know, very like mild mannered people, whereas Dauntless are very bold, brave, daring. They're constantly like doing dangerous activities. And this is kind of like a slap in the face to their parents because now their parents don't have children that they're living with anymore and interacting with. Both of their children left them. So anyway, now it is time for initiation into Dauntless. So the initiation is pretty fucking brutal. They have to jump onto this moving train, jump off of the moving train, and then jump several stories through this building and they can't see the bottom of what they're jumping into so they're just told to literally jump off a building and hope for the best. But I'll just tell you right now, if four told me to jump off of a building, I'd already be falling through the sky. No hesitation required. If I knew four was down there to catch me, you best believe I'll be the first one to jump off the ledge. So Beatrice actually, believe it or not, was actually the first one to jump and she ends up changing her name to Triss when she gets down there and sees four. And you know, it's kind of love at first sight. Four is one of the dauntless instructors that are working with 
the incoming Dauntless Initiates, and there's also another guy who's working with them uh, named Eric, who is a Dauntless leader. Very brutal, very different vibes from before. Throughout this initiation process, there are already people who have been getting cut left and right. There's even someone who died when they failed to like jump on or off the train. But here's the thing, they get told that there are 20 of them and only 10 will make it through Dauntless initiation. The other 10, they may die, but whatever's left will become factionless. So those are pretty high stakes because once you become factionless, you can't re-enter society. While she is undergoing the initiation process, Triss meets a couple people. Christina, who becomes her bestie. She is a transfer from Candor. Will, who is a transfer from Eurydite, who eventually um, has a little thing with Christina. And then we've got Al. Al transferred from Candor to Dauntless. And he is this big guy, but is actually like a really big sweetheart, eventually has a little crush on Triss. And so those are the people that Triss is mainly interacting with. That's her little group of friends. Then we've got one other person that you should probably be aware of, and that's my boy Peter. Peter is a transfer from Eurydite. He is an absolute asshole. I cannot emphasize to you enough about how much this man does not respect others. <laughs> Triss undergoes a lot of changes. She learns how to fire a gun. She learns how to fight. Um, one particular day, uh, Four kind of instructs her on how to fight, puts his hand on her waist. She thinks about it for several days, if not weeks after the fact. Although same girl, same. Like how could you not? She gets a tattoo of three birds on her collarbone, kind of flying towards her heart, which represent her mom, her dad, and her brother. Then things start to get scary. Um, they start having to fight each other in this like boxing ring sort of situation. Christina was fighting someone. She ends up surrendering because she was getting beaten up pretty bad and because she verbally surrendered instead of just let the punches keep on flying until she was literally unconscious Eric made her hang over this chasm which is over this like really rushing rapid river and if she slipped she would have died falling into that river but she managed to make it it was just a pretty traumatizing punishment and then Triss was set to fight Peter and he beat her up so badly. Then Triss and Four start to hang out a little bit more. He clearly has an eye on her and there was this game of capture the flag and Triss ended up finding the tactic to win, which was by seeking higher ground. And the way that she sought higher ground was by climbing the Ferris wheel. And Four climbed after her onto this Ferris wheel, even though as we will see later on that he has a fear of heights, but you know what? He was just mesmerized by my girl Triss. Then there was this one time where Al was really bad at like target practice when everybody was throwing knives and Eric was about to make him go like, within the line of fire of the knives and Triss was like um Eric that's ridiculous and so Eric was like why don't you be the target then and so she was the target for four and his little knife throwing and you know what four he is an excellent fighter he is just good at everything and so he was throwing knives at his soon-to-be lover then it was visiting day and visiting day is a day where parents could go visit their kids if they transferred to another faction and Tris didn't really expect anyone from her family to come but her mom ended up visiting and her mom ended up telling her in secret that Tris needed to go to Eurydite headquarters to tell Caleb to research the simulation serum. The simulation serum is the serum that they injected into everybody when they were 16 in order to take the aptitude test. The aptitude test that I should, probably should have mentioned is like a little uh, simulation in your mind. So the rankings come out, as I've mentioned, only the top 10 out of 20 will move forward and actually become official members of Dauntless. Triss is number six, which is good, you know, kind of in the middle of the pack. Peter was second only to this guy named Edward. So what did Peter decide to do with that information? In the wee hours of the night, he stabbed Edward in the eye. That's my man! <laughs> Edward ended up leaving after that. Uh, he chose to be factionless. Triss goes ziplining. It was this really fun experience. Four did not attend, however, because as we've mentioned, my boy has a massive fear of heights. And now the mental phase starts, and this phase is all about conquering your fears in simulations. Triss is the best at this by far because she has this 
innate ability to realize that she's in a simulation. And so Ford, who is proctoring one of her simulations, realizes that he's like, oh my god, girl, you're Divergent. And she's like, what? I have no idea what you're talking about. And so we find out that Divergent actually means that you have the ability to become aware during a simulation. If you're not Divergent, you won't be able to gain this awareness. And so both for and Tori, who was Triss's original proctor, and she's also, you know, a member of Dauntless, they both tell her to like, girl, calm down, like be worse at the simulations because if you are super good, that will alert the Dauntless leaders that you're Divergent and you will get killed because there have been secret killings of Divergent people. The Divergent people are being targeted for an unknown reason at this point. And so what does Triss do? She is first in the rankings of the, <laughs> of the simulations by far. My girl doesn't even fucking try to hide it. In terms of the progression of Four and Triss's love, there was this one moment where Four was drunk and he walked over to Triss and he was like, you're pretty. And then there was this other time where Triss and Four held hands in a hallway for like a couple seconds both really fun intimate moments and then the first really really traumatizing moment for Triss was when Peter and Al tried to kill her by throwing her into the river and the only reason she didn't die was because four Kate stepped in and started fighting Peter and Al and like beat the shit out of them and so Triss was like really disoriented she passed out and the next morning she woke up in four's bed I mean girl if you got to end up in four's bed I'd say almost getting murdered was worth it and Al you know what I'm not even really entirely sure why he <laughs> decided to partake in almost killing Triss, but he felt so guilty for being involved in that, that I, he actually commits suicide by jumping into the very river that he was about to dump Triss into. And then Four ends up showing Triss his fear landscape and his fears consist of heights, confinement, killing a woman. And this is more of like the fear of his capacity to kill but the woman is someone he doesn't know, but eventually it turns into Triss, fun fact. And the last one is Marcus, his father, who uh, physically abused him when Four was a child. And this is when Triss realized, oh my god. So no one really knows that much about Four's backstory. Four isn't his actual name. His actual name is Tobias. And Tobias is actually someone from abnegation like Triss. And Tobias is also the son of an abnegation leader named Marcus, who is very powerful, but no one knows that he abused his son. And so the reason that Tobias decided to leave abnegation was to get away from his father. You want to hear a funny line though, from when Four and Triss were going through Four's fear simulation? You know, most boys would enjoy being trapped in close quarters with a girl, not claustrophobic people, Triss. <laughs> also, if you didn't already figure this out, Four is nicknamed Four because he only has four fears. That is very unusual. Most people have like a lot, like, I don't know, 10 at least. So after all of this flirting and holding hands for five seconds, Four decides to actually confess to Triss that he likes her. And Triss is like, you like me, but what about the age gap? She's 16, he's 18, and he's like, I think we can make it work. Can you though? That's a uh, risky business. And then her second reaction is, well, I'm not even pretty. And he's like, I like the way you look. So you're saying you like ugly bitches then? <laughs> and then they kiss, really sweet moment. And then Triss decides to visit Caleb and do what her mom asked her to do on visiting day, but she ends up getting into a fight with Caleb because of the way he's like reacting to her. And at the very end of the argument, she's like, mom told you to research the simulation serum. So um, do that bitch. And then because she wasn't really supposed to visit Caleb in Uridite headquarters, she got called to meet Janine, who is the leader of the Uridite faction. And through this interaction, she realizes that Janine is behind the missing Divergent people. Like Janine is the one who wants the Divergent people dead. In Triss's final evaluation, um, in terms of the whole simulation thing, one of her fears is a uh, fear of intimacy, which that is so real. <laughs> But the thing about the uh, final evaluation was that everyone was injected with the serum, right? Everyone that was going through like Dauntless initiation training, all of the Dauntless people. So the next morning, Triss wakes up 
and everybody is kind of acting weird. Everybody is acting like a zombie. No one is responding to her. They're all doing the same motions in the same rhythm. And she realizes that everyone is in some sort of simulation because the stuff that they were injected with the day prior for the final evaluation, that was actually the serum that is making everybody into a zombie right now. So Tris to pretends to be under a simulation and she tries to find four and she eventually finds him and she thinks that he's part of a serum until he secretly holds her hand. <laughs> they aren't able to pretend for long though and they get caught and taken to Janine. Meanwhile, the Dauntless people that are in the simulation start attacking the entire abnegation faction. People are dying left and right. While Triss and four are meeting with Janine, or tries to strangle Janine before he gets injected with this special serum that is supposed to work on divergent people. And Triss gets taken to a different area and is about to be executed by drowning in this tank when her mother comes out of the blue and saves her. And then Triss's mom starts leading her to this basement where the rest of her family and other abnegation people are hiding out when a pack of dauntless people start heading their way and Triss's mom sacrifices herself to save Triss. And then Triss is heading to the basement and she gets confronted by Will, who's under the simulation, and she has to kill Will in order to save herself and make it to the basement. In the basement, she finds her father, Caleb, Marcus, Ford's dad, and a couple of others. And so she realizes that she needs to stop the serum, so she takes her father, Caleb, and Marcus to Dauntless headquarters. The rest of the abnegation people will retreat to Amity Compound to be safe from like all the Dauntless killing. So the group goes to Dauntless headquarters. They find Peter guarding one of the doors and Tris takes him down and he makes a deal saying that he'll help her find out what the control room is if she takes him with him. Yes, Peter, self-preservation slay. So Tris and her father are the only ones that are able to make it to the control room and actually Tris's father ends up sacrificing himself so that Tris can safely make it to the control room and so in the same day Triss's mom and dad both died protecting her. Trauma! Inside the control room Triss finds Tobias who is still under the simulation serum that he was injected with when they were with Janine and so Triss and Tobias start fighting. I'm saying four and Tobias like interchangeably just like they're the same person. Anyways she's fighting Tobias and eventually she realizes she's like oh my god like what am, I, what am I supposed to do? I can't possibly kill him. And so she's talking to him all this time and she ends up giving him her gun and she's like, just kill me, dude. And he's about to, but then he's like struggling internally because he can't pull the trigger. And then he wakes up eventually and he's like, oh my God, Triss, hey. <laughs> because it was that action and her voice that brought him out of the simulation. And so together they stop the simulation, put whatever data was causing the simulation onto this hard drive and he tells Tris that he loves her. <laughs> and so now we're in the second book. So I like Tris and Four's relationship. I think that they have a lot of cute moments. Four doesn't really give you those like sassy one-liner bangers that Peta does, but you can tell that he just like really, really loves Tris, very protective and caring of her. It's great, don't get me wrong, but a lot of their cute moments was in book one. Book two, they start having problems. Book three, they really start having problems. <laughs> but anyway, you get to see a little bit of that cuteness in the beginning of this book. Um, so let's just get right into it. So a bunch of the ab abnegation people, Marcus, Caleb, Tris, Tobias, Peter, they all went to the Amity compound. The leader of the Amity faction, um, well, the leader, they don't really, technically have a leader, but the leader is um, this woman named Joanna. To show that Triss is a changed woman, she cuts off all of her hair. It's a new dawn, it's a new day, and the Amity people say that um, everyone, you know, that's not Amity can stay so long as there's no fighting or violence. Yeah, I'm sure that they'll they'll last long. One of the cute Triss and Tobias moments was when Triss had these nightmares because obvious fucking Lee, my girl, is traumatized and she goes and gets into Tobias's bed. He says, I'll fight the bad dreams off if they come to get you. With what, she says. My bare hands, obviously. <laughs> Peter ends up almost stealing the hard drive, but Triss gets it back through violent means. And obviously that's a big no-no in the Amity compound. So Triss gets um, injected with this happy serum. And this happy serum is actually put inside the bread at Amity compound. And that's why everybody's so jolly and merry all the time. But you know, Triss, is not really a jolly merry gal. So when she becomes totally jolly merry all of a sudden, they gave her a little bit too much serum apparently because uh, she's a small gal and they didn't really take that into account. And Four finds her being all jolly and merry and he's like, 
what the fuck did they do to you? My man was shocked. My man was stricken. He went to Joanna and he was like, give me back my cold hearted, dark and angsty bitch right now. <laughs> Their moment of peace doesn't last long though, because all of a sudden, um, Eurydite people go to the Amity compound looking for them and they discover them and so they have to run away. Triss can't even really fight or shoot a gun because of her trauma with Will, but she does manage to save Peter from dying. Thank you Triss, my man gets to see another day. <laughs> the group gets separated, so in one area we've got Peter and Marcus and then in um, the area that we're following, we have Triss, Tobias, Caleb. They hop on a train into a cart with a bunch of factionless people. One of the factionless people is Edward from the first book who got his eye stabbed. And they are not very friendly towards Triss and Tobias and Caleb, but once Tobias says his full name, hey, y'all, my name's Tobias Eaton, all the factionless people are like, oh my God, we surrender to you king. And this is because, surprise, Tobias's mother named Evelyn is the leader of the factionless people. And this was a surprise to us all because I'm pretty sure that uh, all the abnegation people thought she was dead, but it turns out she ran away from Marcus or some, she, she got away from Marcus somehow because Marcus was also physically abusing her. So obviously, you know, he's a stand-up guy. Tobias at this current moment does not like his mom though. There are some hard feelings because she didn't take Tobias with him. He was like, girl, why the fuck did you leave me with that monster? That man is a monster. So in terms of the factions, everything is a little bit crazy right now. Let me give you the breakdown. So in terms of Dauntless people, um, half of the Dauntless people went with Candor. Half of the Dauntless people went with Eurydite. The Abnegation faction is with the Factionless right now. And you know, some are with Amity, but like everyone is kind of spread out all over the place. A lot of Tobias and Triss's friends are with the Dauntless people who are currently at Candor headquarters. And so Tobias and Triss go to the Candor headquarters to meet with them, but when they get there, they are arrested because the Candor leader thinks that Tobias and Triss were the ones who were running the simulation instead of like ending the simulation. And so Tobias and Triss are both given truth serum and they're put on trial. And during this trial, Tobias reveals that Marcus is an abuser and Triss reveals that she killed Will. And Christina was in the audience and Christina was Will's lover. So she was flabbergasted and now Triss is dead to her. The thing about Triss is she's pretty much aware during every single simulation that she's encountered. So when she revealed that she killed Will, that was kind of on her own terms because if she really wanted to, she could have withheld the fact, but you know, she was like, let's just get it out in the open because the guilt has been eating me alive. So then there is this event where Triss and this guy named Uriah, one of her old Dauntless friends, they go to um, try and spy on some Uridite people, but um, the group that they went with ended up getting injected with this like weird mystery serum. And then the Divergent people started getting rounded up. But then Tobias and a bunch of other people like went in to save them and through this interaction they were able to capture Eric who was one of the original Dauntless leaders who was working very closely with Janine. So then the leader of Candor is sent to meet with um, a person who is very close to Janine and he tells the leader of Candor a bunch of Janine's demands which is basically to hand over a bunch of divergent people to get everyone injected with the serum that Triss and Uri and the others were injected with before and to give back Eric. However, a fight breaks out during that agreement and this girl named Shauna, who is Zeke's girlfriend and Zeke is Uriah's older brother. <laughs> there are a lot of people like side characters that are prevalent in the books, but they're not really that prevalent in the plot, but I'm gonna mention them anyway, because if you're into Divergent, you're gonna know who I'm talking about. And like, it feels weird to leave them out of the recap. So anyway, Shauna during this fight gets shot and paralyzed. And Triss, I don't know if you've noticed recently, but Triss has been doing a lot of risky things in this book. I mean, she was doing a lot of risky things in book one, but those were risky things that she had to do for initiation. Now she's like going with Uriah to spy on the Uridite people. She's getting into fights with Janine and everyone. And Tobias notices her self-destructing tendencies. And he's like, girl, if you keep trying to kill yourself, we are donezo. But does Triss listen? No, not really. Because the guilt of what she did to Will is eating her alive. And she wants 
any sort of reprieve from that. And the quickest and most long-term solution in her mind is the sweet release of death. When everyone gets back to Kandor headquarters, the leader of Kandor makes an announcement that he will be accepting Janine's demands. So immediately Tris Tobias and a bunch of others go to Eric's prison cell and kill him. So that's already one of the demands that the Kandor leader cannot fulfill at this point. And so I guess in sort of retaliation of that, a bunch of people are already um, injected with the serum that Janine wants everyone to be injected with. And so she starts demonstrating what that serum can be used for. And she sends people up to the roof of Kandor headquarters to commit suicide. One of those people was Marley, who is Uriah's girlfriend. And so Marley ends up dying, but Triss ends up saving Shauna's younger brother. Um, and Shauna also has a younger sister named Lynn, who we'll come back to later. But anyway, because Triss was like trying to save people and because Triss and Christina both witnessed um, Marley's suicide, Christina at this point, because of everything that they've been through and because she has taken time to herself, she is able to forgive Triss for what happened with Will. And so because Triss absolutely does not want anybody else committing suicide because divergent people aren't turning themselves in, Triss, as a divergent person herself, decides to turn herself in to Uridite headquarters. Peter is currently at Uridite headquarters, becomes her personal guard. Janine starts experimenting on Triss to create a serum that she won't be immune to. And then Tobias ends up turning himself in. And Triss originally thinks that he just like <laughs> wants to commit double suicide with her, but it's actually because he's planning a rescue mission for Triss and he's trying to find out the locations of the different control rooms in Uridai headquarters because Tobias and Triss's allies are actually going to team up with the factionless and by extension Tobias's mom. But another super surprising thing that was happening during Triss's time at Uridite headquarters is that she finds out that Caleb, her own brother, has been working with Janine all along. And so Triss is like, oh my god, you sneaky bitch, you are dead to me because you are literally watching me be tortured. You know that I'm eventually going to be executed and you're not only standing by but you're supporting this? So Triss is about to be executed. She actually thinks she is being executed. She was injected with some sort of serum but it was actually a paralysis serum because Peter and Tobias are working together to save Triss and get her out of the Uridite headquarters. So yes, my man is capable of doing good deeds. With that being said, the reason that he decided to help Triss was because she saved him um, at the Amity compound, if you might remember. So, you know, it wasn't necessarily out of the kindness of his own heart, but I still call that a win. <laughs> so anyway, now Tobias and Triss are sort of at a crossroads because Tobias is siding more so with his mom. They have kind of salvaged their relationship a bit. She is telling him stuff about what happened with Marcus and he feels like this connection to her because they both underwent his abuse. But Triss, you know, Triss is a very logical girly. She um, has heard that Marcus knows information that her mom was died trying to protect. And she's like, okay, well, I need this info as well. So I need to work with Marcus. So while Tobias is working with Evelyn and the factionists to invade and overthrow the Eurodite rule. Triss is working with Marcus and also um, a couple others like Kara, Kara, don't know. It, would it be Kara or Kara? I don't know. What if I just alternate? So anyway, Triss is working with Marcus and Kara to find and save the information that her mom and the abnegation are dying to protect. So Triss is able to make it to the room where um, she's able to get the info that she needs. However, before she um, gets access to that room, there is like a sort of safety protocol and she gets entered into a simulation in which she has to battle herself. And, you know, theoretically speaking, if you were to battle yourself, it would be an endless battle because, you know, you have the same everything, the same mind, physical strength, all that other shit. But she ends up winning because she is more desperate than her simulation counterpart. So then she gets into the room with the valuable info. And in that room already is Janine 
and Tori. And Tori has it specifically out for Janine because Janine is the one who killed her younger brother because her younger brother was divergent, but Triss is like, Tori, stop. I actually need Janine alive for a little bit longer because I need access to that info and I can't get that info without Janine's assistance with like the computer coding and shit. But Tori doesn't listen. She is in a blind rage and she ends up stabbing and killing Janine. So at this point, Tobias and a, a couple of others show up on the scene and Triss is like, Tobias, you need to listen to me. I'm being called a traitor by Tori right now for siding with Janine, but you need to trust me that the information that is on those computers is valuable and needs to be shared. And she doesn't know if Tobias is gonna listen to her because Tobias kind of has figured out that Triss has been allying with Marcus and obviously Tobias doesn't like Marcus. Meanwhile, back in like the lobby of Uridite headquarters where the battle was going on, Lynn, who is Shauna's younger sister, Lynn uh, ended up confessing that she loved Marley, who was uh, Uriah's girlfriend. And then Lynn died. And then Evelyn ends up stabbing like the dauntless leaders like tori in the back by uh taking over you know the whole government sort of situation she and the factionless are in charge they are getting rid of factions entirely but in the midst of this tobias shares the information that tris wanted to see so badly with everybody and it turns out to be this video of edith pryor who i guess is a relative of tris from long ago the video reveals in a shocking turn of events that everybody in Trissa's society was placed there to create divergent people. And once enough divergent people were emerging in the population, they were to send that population of divergent people beyond the gates because their whole community is surrounded by, the, by these gates. And so now everybody's like, shit, what are we to fucking do? So like I've said, the factions are gone because Evelyn is in charge now and Evelyn doesn't want anybody to go outside the gates because inside the gates she's in charge and she enjoys being in charge. Triss and Tobias are having some major communication issues because you know number one they were both um kind of harboring secrets that they were working with opposing parents opposing Tobias's parents and number two Triss has a problem when Tobias has his own opinions so I know that the like issue is a little bit more complex but from my understanding Triss uh always thinks that she's right because of the logical way in that she thinks. And you know what? Pretty much 100% of the time, Triss is right. When Tobias disagrees and, you know, acts on his own, Triss doesn't like that and Triss gets mad and, you know, they both get mad at each other because they have different opinions, but like, I don't even know how one would solve this because when you have different opinions on things, you don't know who's right until you get to that future point. So anyway, um, without the factions, the society is not doing super hot. So this rebel organization called the Allegiant rises up, its leaders being Kara and Joanna. They want to reinstate the factions and also go beyond the walls to see what the video was talking about. Tensions are high. There is even this violent demonstration where Edward, the man with one eye, ends up dying. So Joanna and a couple others um, are in charge of trying to reinstate the factions and overthrow Evelyn and the faction list. Meanwhile, Kara, Triss, Tobias, Christina, Uriah, Tori, and Peter are set to go outside the walls. Because they're not supposed to be going outside the walls, they have to do this sort of in secret. It's kind of a, a, an escape mission. They also break out Caleb because he was about to be executed. And even though Triss uh, hates Caleb, she doesn't know if she actually wants him dead. So while the group is escaping to go outside the walls, Tori ends up dying, which is really tragic, as you'll see in a few seconds. They make it beyond the walls. Beyond the walls kind of looks deserted and abandoned and in ruins until a truck uh, comes their way and out pops Zoe and this guy Amar who was Boar's old instructor who he thought was dead. It turns out that um, when the Divergent people were disappearing, everybody thought that they were automatically like secretly killed off, but it turns out some of the Divergent people were saved by the people outside. One of the Divergent people being Tori's younger brother that she fought so hard to avenge and she never ended up getting to meet him. Super tragic. But fun fact, Tori's younger brother and Amar are dating, sort of. I, I mean, I don't know if they're official or not, but you know. <laughs> so Zoe is a part of the Bureau of Genetic Welfare. The Bureau of Genetic Welfare was set up to 
genetically create divergent people because um so the people in Triss's society were only aware of their own society they didn't know what was beyond the walls they thought that there wasn't much beyond the walls but what was beyond the walls is the entire world you know the u.s planes all of these things that they didn't know existed the bureau started telling Triss and everybody about their history of genetically pure versus gen genetically damaged. I think people originally started creating genetically different people by altering their genes in order to, I don't know, enhance like different virtues, but it ended up erasing other virtues. Like for example, um, if you enhance smartness, you get rid of empathy, <laughs> stuff like that. So anyway, divergent people, aka genetically pure people, are just like individuals with the capacity for all the virtues. And so the Bureau has been monitoring Triss's society with cameras set up everywhere. So Triss and all the others are, their minds are being fucking blown out of the water right now because they're like, wow, the society we lived in was some sort of experiment that was set up by these people. They meet David, who is the leader of the Bureau and actually had a thing for Triss's mom. And Triss's mom was actually from the Bureau crazy. Triss and Tobias end up go undergoing some genetic testing because uh, the people there had a sneaking suspicion that Tobias wasn't actually divergent and it turns out yeah they were right Tobias isn't actually divergent he is genetically damaged and this messes with his mind so much he's like oh my god I'm damaged. So Tobias starts allying with this girl named Nita who is also genetically damaged but she like hates the bureau and society who have kind of set up this whole system where genetically damaged people are treated as inferior and the source of like everyone's problems but one thing that is not good about nita is that she is using violence to fulfill her goals so tobias is now allying with nita and nita starts attacking the bureau uh and she creates these explosions and one of the explosions ends up basically killing Uriah. So now Tobias is like, oh my god, I made the wrong decision again. And also Nita almost ends up killing David, but Triss saves David because she's like, all of this is wrong. And so David then starts to trust Triss more. But now Triss and Tobias are like, almost on the verge of breaking up because she's like, I told you this would happen. I told you not to trust Nita. And he was like, Ugh, I know. So Tobias is just always wrong every time, I guess. So now here's the tea. Because things got so messed up and Triss and Tobias is in everyone's society, now where Evelyn and the factionless are ruling, the Bureau wants to reset the city because actually that city is the most successful because there are a bunch of cities like Triss and Tobias is one uh, all over the country, but theirs has been the most successful because theirs has used the faction system. And so the Bureau wants to reset everyone's memories and kind of like start over. Meanwhile, Triss wants to reset the Bureau's memories because she's like, we can't let them erase the people from our city's minds. Like, they didn't do anything wrong. And also she kind of wants to get back at the Bureau because the Bureau was the one who gave Janine the serum that allowed the Dauntless people to turn into zombies and attack the Abnegation from book one. So a plan is created where Tobias, Christina, Peter, and a bunch of others will go back into the city to um, inoculate or make some certain people immune from the memory serum just in case the memory serum is released into the city. Tobias also was given a mini vial of the memory serum in case uh, the plan works in which he will erase one of his parents' memories in order to like ally with them. Tobias ends up going to Evelyn and he pleads with her to see reason and choose him in sort of like you know, causing more violence and Evelyn actually agrees and she proposes a peace negotiation to Joanna and Marcus who also started working with Joanna and she was like, okay, I'll relinquish my rule um, as long as the new leaders get to be voted in and Marcus cannot be a leader and Joanna was like, sis, say less, we've got a deal. So the memory serum that Tobias was going to use on one of his parents was actually uh, given to Peter because Peter realized that he is a shit person and he's like maybe if i you know start fresh maybe i won't turn out to be such a bad guy like how did we get to this point why have i why am i like this basically and so he erases his memory and you know what 
uh, it doesn't really work. <laughs> but you know what? After he used the serum, if he ran into me, we could have made it work. Like, I have faith, I have faith. Meanwhile, so the Bureau's plan obviously was to reset the city by sending out this memory serum into the air. Triss wanted to do an Uno reverse on that and send it into the Bureau's air. So Triss and Caleb were sent to um, kind of do like the little switcheroo, but the thing is whoever does the switcheroo will die because a death serum is released and the only person who knows the key to stop the death serum is David and David will not give out that code under any means. And so Caleb was the one who was set to sacrifice himself to fulfill the plan. But when Triss asked him, hey buddy, like why are you doing this? And he's like, well, I just want to escape my guilt. And Triss was like, Ugh, that was the one thing you weren't supposed to say. So Triss ends up taking Caleb's place and she has faith that she'll be able to fight the serum because she's fought all the other serums, so why not this one? And you know what? Surprisingly, Triss fights the death serum. She goes in and she's fighting the death serum and she is alive. But then David, he goes and he finds her and he sees Triss like about to set up the switcheroo and he points a gun at her and he's like no 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 Triss I wouldn't do that if I were you and Triss is like suck it old man she starts doing the switcheroo David shoots at her and shoots at her and you know what Triss ends up successfully doing it she sets off the memory serum into the bureau and then collapses on the floor and dies of blood loss because of the amount of times that David shot her. And so if you've never heard of this story before you may be thinking damn they really killed off the main character huh? Well, you know, <laughs> the first time I read the series, yes, I was thinking that. I was like, oh my god, they killed Triss. But here's the thing. Um, the second time I was reading it, I guess knowing what was awaiting for me at the end of the third book, she was talking about killing herself all of the fucking time. In the first book, she was on the verge of killing herself all day, every day. Accidentally, though. Like, it was just because she was put in a lot of dangerous situations, but that was necessary in order to you know, be, get through Dauntless Initiation. And then in the second book, because of her guilt from killing Will, she was trying to kill, her, kill herself the entire book through various ways. And then she was actually almost successful in killing herself. And then she realized, wait, I don't actually want to die. I have a new zest for life. And then in the third book, she actually kills herself. <laughs> but you know, it's like, she saved the day. It's just such a waste because she totally could have survived because she was able to fight the death serum. But anyways, you may be asking what did Tobias do when he found out? Well, so Tobias came back and he's like, hey, where's Triss? I want to see my lady. And everybody was like, she didn't make it. And he was like, what? That's not possible. Like, my girl is the strongest person I know. She definitely made it. Uh, what are you talking about? And they were like, no, she didn't. And this sent Tobias on a full on depression spiral that lasted quite some time. It lasted quite some time. He wanted to in fact kill David, but since David's mind was like erased, the person who killed Triss is gone. Like is, is no longer exists. So Tobias to escape his grief almost takes memory serum himself, but Christina ends up stopping him. And then two years later, uh, he is in a definitely better place. He's actually set to become a politician, following in the footsteps of his father. Hopefully that is where the similarity between him and his father ends. But I recommend watching the movies, not because they're good, but because you'll get to see Tobias in action, which is a major plus. You'll also get to see Peter in action, my man, um, Miles Teller. <laughs> Hope you enjoyed coming along with me on this journey. I hope um, you're having a good week and month and year, and I'll see you next time. Bye.